Tailwind V4 has been in the works for over a year, but as of today, it is finally out. It has a lot of awesome new features and changes, even some breaking ones too. So in the end, I'll show you how I upgraded my app with over 130 Tailwind components. This is truly a huge update, so let's take a look. Let's start off with my favorite change, and that is that the configuration files are moving away from JavaScript and just all being done in a CSS file. This includes using CSS variables for configuring your design tokens, defining custom utilities and variants, and a whole load more. This is all done with the new at theme directive that influences which utility classes exist in your project. You can see the available namespaces on that documentation, but there's so many of them that you can customize. This makes it super easy to pass things that were previously in your JavaScript config to other libraries like Motion and just plain JavaScript as well, as it's now all done with a CSS variable. Another thing you may remember from the Tailwind config is the content array. This is where you had to tell Tailwind where it was being used. They have removed this entirely now, and it's all done automatically for you. Even includes support for ignoring files that are in your Git ignore. If you do ever need to explicitly add a source that's been excluded though, you can always add it in with the new at source directive right in your CSS file. Other awesome directives for configuration include the at plugin one to add in third party plugins like Tailwind Animate, at custom variant, they have a new at config directive in case you do still need to use the old JavaScript file, and they've even removed the at Tailwind directive as you now just use the CSS import one. Finally, instead of using the layer directive to extend utilities like we had to do previously, there is now a new at utility one. Since we no longer have JavaScript configuration files, options like container with center and padding, that's all been moved directly into the CSS file with just pure CSS. They've even made a small change to how the default border color worked, changing it to just use current color, so you can even add something if you want backwards compatibility. They've also changed the prefight placeholder color as well to just use 50% opacity of the current color. Other files that might change for you include the post CSS one. In fact, they've streamlined the whole setup process now. You no longer need extra plugins like post CSS import auto prefixer. They have a first party one that will do it all for you. Even better, if you use Vite now, you can actually get rid of post CSS entirely with the Tailwind V plugin. Combine that with no longer needing to set up the content array, and you can now use Tailwind with pretty much zero configuration. Let's talk about some modern CSS features that are now coming to Tailwind. They've got native cascade layers. They've also got registered custom properties, which is gonna make it possible to animate things like gradients. And it also improves performance on large pages. They've got color mix, which lets you adjust the opacity of any color value, including CSS variables and current color. And they've also got logical properties as well, which simplifies right to left support and reduces the size of your generated CSS. The default color palette got an upgrade moving from RGB to OKLCH. This is to take advantage of a wider gamut to make the colors more vivid in places where they were previously limited by that RGB color space. Container query support has also been merged in, so you no longer need the Tailwind Container Queries plugin, and that comes with support for max width container queries as well. We got some new APIs for 3D transforms as well, like Rotate, Scale, Translate, Perspective, and tons more. There's new gradient features like linear gradient angles, which actually came with the renaming of background gradient to background linear. There's gradient interpolation modifiers, and what's really cool is there is new background conic and background radial utilities. That's why they renamed the background gradient to background linear. There's a new starting variant, which adds support for the CSS starting style feature. This makes it possible to transition element properties when an element is first displayed. There's a new not variant as well, which finally adds support for the CSS not pseudo class, as well as negating media queries and support queries. That's already a whole load of new features, but let me quick fire some more before we move on to what's changed. There's new inset shadow and inset ring utilities, new field sizing utilities for auto resizing text areas without the need of JavaScript. There's new color scheme utilities. There's new font stretch utilities, which will allow you to tweak variable fonts that support widths. There's a new inert variant. There's new nth variants. There's a new invariant as well, which is actually similar to group, but without the need for the group class. There's support for popover open. And finally, there is a new descendant variant for styling all descendant elements. This should be used as an absolute last resort when you can't control the descendants. Please don't go around throwing this in Tailwind code bases. It will be an absolute nightmare and it takes away the magic of Tailwind being localized. Another favorite change or new feature of mine is they've actually simplified the way utilities and variants work. They're now going to allow them to accept certain types of arbitrary values without configuration or the arbitrary value syntax. For example, you can create grids of any size now. You can use Boolean data attributes without the square brackets and spacing utilities can now also use any value, which is then going to be calculated based on your spacing variable. 
Now, I'm finally near the end of this change log. There's just a few more changes from V3 that you're going to need to look out for. The first one is utilities like Shadow Ring and Backdrop have all been renamed to make them more consistent and predictable. They've also changed the variable syntax from square brackets to parentheses to remove ambiguity. Deprecated utilities have finally been removed entirely, so you can't use them. Stacked variants have gone from right to left to left to right to look more like CSS syntax. And the hover variant now only applies when the primary input device supports hover. This may have an implication on mobile if you've previously used hover on tap, but don't worry, you can go ahead and get the old behavior back with some CSS. You can also no longer disable core plugins, and they actually recommend using the variable function over the theme one now. But if you do need the theme function where variables aren't supported, like media queries, you should use the CSS variable name instead of the old dot notation. I think that's everything that you need to know about what's been added and changed in Tailwind V4. So let's take a look at the upgrade process. So my project here is a Shadsian like component library that I created has over 130 components all using Tailwind. So I'm very curious to see how it migrates. Now, if you've used ShadCM before, this setup should look quite familiar to you. But you can see in my Tailwind config here, I have support for dark mode. I'm using that content array, which we now know they're getting rid of. And then I have some settings on the theme for container with center and padding, which they also got rid of because we can't use the JavaScript options. And then we have extend where I add in my own semantic colors that use CSS variables, and they're all defined over in my CSS file. And then we also have things like the font family, border radius, keyframes, and animations. And then we also have the Tailwind CSS animate plugin there as well. So it's actually quite a complex config that is going to need to migrate over to just purely using CSS. Lucky for us, they provide a handy tool that promises to do all of this in one command. I'm going to go ahead and run npx at tailwind css slash upgrade. Let's hit enter and see what this does. So it only took a couple of seconds and you can see it lists out all of the steps that it took. It's migrated over my JavaScript config files. It's migrated some of the templates, the style sheets, the post CSS configuration, and then updated my dependencies. Overall in my project then, it changed 137 files. Now remember about 130 of those are components that I have that all use Tailwind. So I'm curious to see what it had to change in each of them. But you can see that it changed the Tailwind config here, it deleted it, and hopefully it's moved it over to the globals.css file now. There we go, as you can see, it's got rid of the Tailwind directive in favor of this new at import one. We're using at plugin for Tailwind CSS anime, at custom variant for dark mode. And then finally, we have this at theme directive where we're defining the theme. So we've got dash dash color border, which was a custom color I wanted to add. And that's just using my old border variable as well. So obviously didn't want to modify that. In the future, I'd probably come in here and actually just change this to the value itself without using a variable that then points to another variable. But it's nice to know the migration tool doesn't want to touch what we already had. Scrolling down then, we can see it's moved in the keyframes as well that were also in my config, the font family, the border radius, it's got the animations, it's got the utility of the container as well. And then it's also added in a border color thing here that adds in that backwards compatibility that I mentioned earlier, and then another utility as well. In the post CSS file then, you can see it got rid of auto prefixer and also the old Tailwind CSS plugin. And it's added in the new one of at Tailwind CSS slash post CSS, which is gonna have all of the behavior that we need for Tailwind. Looking through the rest of the 130 files, I can see it's just made some of the small changes that I mentioned earlier. Like this one here, it's got rid of the square brackets notation for variables, and it's moved it over to the new parentheses one. And then we scroll down as well, you can see for data hovered, where it was an arbitrary value. Now that it's just a Boolean, we can just do data dash hovered. You can see here as well, it renamed outline none to outline hidden. This is because in V4, they realized that V3 was a bit confusing where outline none wasn't actually setting the outline style to none. It was just setting it as an invisible outline. So now outline hidden has the old behavior and outline none actually sets the outline style as none now. There we go. I think that is everything I wanted to show you about Tailwind V4. As I said, it's a big change. I'm sure there's even more subtle details if you want to check out the release notes. I'll leave them linked in the description down below. To me, these changes are all in the right direction. So let me know what you think in the comments below. While you're there, like and subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.